All right, people, I know you're waiting for the big news, but before we get to that, right, we got to address something more important. These glasses, right, these have had these for a year or two or whatever like that. We got some new frames for the World Series of Poker. Y'all can vote for which ones you like best in the comments down below. Um, I'm going to probably be like mixing and matching. So these are the old ones, right? You know, like a little blue tint or whatever, Ray-Bans or something like that. So this is pair number one, which is a very similar like lens and everything like that. They're just like kind of a gray like clear type look. So that's number one right there, okay? Then number two, got a little bit of a different look. These are, uh, you get a little more delicate. They're rimless, okay? A little bit of blue again in the sides. Now, these ones take a little bit more getting used to because you can, I don't know, they're smaller and whatnot. That's number two right here, the rimless. Number three, I like a little funky. I like a little color. We're going with, these are actually Oakley's and they're blue, right? So we got a little bit of a funky, funky, funky there, but they're like bright blue. Now these, and these may be my favorite. They're very in style right now. I saw them. I never wore glasses like this, but I'm a fan. So tell me if you hate them or not, but I love these. And I'll tell you what's the best about these. They fit the best. I feel like, I mean, it's like I got big eyes. I feel like I can see everything because there's no like frame in the way. So these are my favorite of the ones I got, but let me know if you hate them. And it doesn't mean I'm not going to wear them. I'm probably going to wear them a lot this summer, but I'm going to mix and match with wardrobe. It'll be fun. And in other news, of course, I mean, you know, obviously if you're on social media, it's been sort of flooded with uh, some hashtag A loves the D. I got married to Amanda Leatherman after, man, what a, I mean, she's my dream girl. She really was the first time I met her. She was so young and I was a little older at the time and uh, she was ready to, you know, she's young. She's just moved to Vegas. She's looking to party, have fun, do that kind of stuff. And I was at a time in my life where um, I just gotten divorced, right? And I'm looking at like, okay, marriage time, white picket fences type thing. She's like, wait a minute, I'm not ready for that yet. So, um, so I split. I ended up uh, dating that um, Christina Polgar. Um, she dated other people, and I dated other people in between. Um, and uh, she came back to town thanks to Brett Hanks. I mean, he's like the the doer. I, you know, we were just talking. We were friendly. We've been friendly for a long time. And uh, he invited her out to, to host Friday Night Poker on Poker Go, which is a really fun interactive show. He's like, what's she up to? So he should, she should host the show. She did. She came out. Um, I'm, I was newly single. She was newly single. Went to dinner. A little apprehensive, you know, because if anyone sort of my heart was connected to, it was always her, you know? I always feel like, you know, and for, in, in fact, I bought her a ring 10 years ago, a, you know, an engagement ring that I finally gave her this uh, New Year's Eve, which is pretty crazy, right? When you think about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been blissful. Like we've just, we just get along so well. We've connected so well. She's a little older. I'm a little older. Um, we have such similar interests. And the truth is we just laugh a lot. You know, we have a lot of fun together, whether it's just watching shows or going out to fancy dinners or hanging out with people. But the wedding itself was a blast. If you want to hire wedding entertainment, I got the Dan Band, which was a lot of fun. But you should also consider hiring Phil Helmuth to just join the dance floor because he was awesome. He was so fun. Um, just like a, you know, a lot of people have a lot of different opinions about Phil, but I, you know, he's got a good heart. He's narcissistic. There's no question about that. I think he's well aware of that. Um, but his heart is gold. You know, he's a good guy, and I was ha happy to have him there. You know, Antonio Sfandiari, a whole bunch of people in the industry, from Adam Pliska to, you know, anyway, a whole bunch. I'm not going to name everybody. So super happy about that. One thing came up. Um, some people, because you know, this is what the internet is, right? We're super happy, glowing, and you got jerks on the internet who are going to say mean things. One of them didn't make any sense. They're blaming me for the hashtag A loves the D because, oh, how could he come up with that and put that on her? That's so offensive to his woman. I didn't. <laughs> okay. <laughs> she loved it. She loved the hashtag, said, let's use it. I'm like, okay. Um, we don't take ourselves too seriously, have a lot of fun. And obviously the hashtag can be flipped. You could do D loves the A, A loves the D. They both work because they're both accurate. Hey. So next up on the schedule for us is the World Series of Poker Fantasy Draft, the 25K that I run every single year and have ever since Howard Lederer ran it, I think in 2010 and 11 or something along those lines. Um, this year, uh, we're going to have to move it. We got showered by the Aria. They, for many years, allowed us to use the convention space. We're going to have to move this year to a new venue. But it's 25000 It's going to happen on uh, May 27th at 9.15 p.m. The entry fee is $25,000. It's an auction draft where you're going to pick eight players with a 200-point or dollar bankroll. Uh, it's always a lot of fun to follow throughout the World Series, and we're going to do that with the vlogs throughout. All right, now for the good stuff, the stuff you guys have been like, oh, when can I buy, when can I buy? The World Series of Poker packages, okay? So if you watched the last video, you'll, you'll know that I'm... Uh, going to give away some, I'm going to do some packages this, this year, low, low tier, low roller, mid stakes, and a high roller. 
and I'm charging the low, low price of 0.0, .0 markup. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun, uh, and I'm, I'm going to give you the breakdown right here on what that looks like. So there's three tiers. Um, the first tier is the low roller, as I said, and that's going to include all buy-ins, $1,500 or lower, and there's going to be 10% of that available. The, the minimum for each one of these packages is $5. You can, if you know, if you just want to like a real cheap sweat and you can afford five bucks, go for it. Um, the highest you'll be able to put in, in, in this tier is 50, because I want to make sure a lot of people have an opportunity. And, um, with a $1,500 lower, the whole package is about 150,000. So that leaves 15 K. I want everyone to have a chance to get in. So $50 maximum on the low tier, the mid stakes tier, uh, is 1501 to 10 K. And I'm going to give away 25% of that, which is about, uh, 25, it should be about a $250,000 overall thing. There, the maximum is a little higher. We're going with 500 bucks. And then of course, the high roller package, which is everything over 10 K and I'm doing 50% of that. So that's going to be a total of about of 200,000. Exactly. The max you can spend on that is 5 K. Now you'll be eligible to do, to buy one of each. So if you're on there quickly, you can spend 5,000, 550 total. If you buy a piece of all three, um, I'm also going to have some cool announcements throughout. Oh, in fact, I think we can mention it here. Um, can we? Let me see. Yeah, I think we can. So I'm going to be doing one-offs as well, occasionally, like probably once a week on the weekends where you'll be able to, uh, you know, buy a percentage. I'll probably give away 10% of some specific higher buy-in events. Um, so for those of you that don't get in on the packages, you know, you'll still have a chance to get on those. Um, where to go? Okay. Well, you're going to go to danielnegranu.com. Okay. We're going to facilitate the whole thing in-house. I got my people on it. Uh, I believe, and don't quote me, I think you can use Venmo and Stripe and who knows whatever else, um, opportunities and, and options to pay, but you can do that. Um, starting Friday at noon Pacific standard time. Okay. Noon Pacific standard time is when these packages will go live. Um, and like I said, you know, a lot of people said, Hey, can you reserve me this? Can you reserve me that? I want to keep it totally open and fair and it's automated and I didn't want to track all that. So it's really just going to be first come first serve. So be prepared at noon to uh, jump on the site. Hopefully it doesn't crash. Make sure. Talk to my people because, you know, everyone comes at the same time. Ah, crash. Freaking Daniel on who sucks. You know, all that kind of stuff. I don't need to deal with that. I've dealt with it enough. All right. So for those of you who are into poker podcasts, I highly recommend mine, ours, Dat Poker Podcast. Dat, D-A-T, Poker Podcast. The D stands for me. The A for Adam. The T for Terrence. And, uh, you know, those guys have been doing podcasts for years, and I sort of joined in as a host. And I enjoyed our last one where we talked about sort of the new, uh, the big 50, the top 50 World Series of Poker players, as well as, you know, there's a poll on WSOP.com where you can uh, um, vote for different, you know, categories and things like that. My puppies are fighting. It's so cute. Um, and one of the topics was, what was it? I don't know, Jungle Man was in there or something like that. And so we were talking about all the players, you know, pretty much complimentary towards all. I said something to the effect of uh, Phil Ivey, when he was at his peak, dominated in every format. He dominated online, he dominated high stakes cash games, and he dominated tournaments. And all I said was, that's not something that Jungle Man is doing today. Jungle Man is a fantastic player. In fact, I said, if I had to play No Limit Hold'em against somebody where I thought I could win, I'd rather play Phil Ivey because I think... Daniel Cates has uh, likely surpassed him in that game. Having said that, if it's stud, stud eight, Raz, I don't know how good Jungle Man is. Maybe he's super good, but Phil Ivey was always the best I'd ever played with. So, um, you know, on Twitter, people were wondering, hey, why, why are you, like, you know, hating on Jungle Man? And I'm saying, no, 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 that's not hate at all. Jungle Man's a super elite player. It's just a different environment now. You're not going to be able to dominate like that. There are so many great players that play online. There are so many great players that play high stakes cash. There are so many players that are playing super high rollers in, cat, in, in tournaments that are unbelievable. To be able to dominate all three of those things is not something anyone's ever going to do again. To be, I mean, frankly, to dominate any of them is going to be difficult for anyone to do because of the fact that, uh, you know, there's just too much competition. When Phil Ivey was doing it, he was clearly just a cut above. And I think he was recognized by his peers as so in every facet. So, uh, again, people just try, always trying to start drama or take what I said and out of context, like jungle man saw it, what this guy tweeted. And he's like, what the hell, dude? I talked to him privately. He apologized. He doesn't need to apologize. Listen, that's silly, but I'm a big jungle man fan. I love the soft core porn, you know, <laughs> I'm all for it. You go, you do you jungle man. You know what I'm saying? Just you do you. All right, last little thing I want to talk about uh, relating to a video that released probably just before this one's going to release uh, on Thursday, and that is the announcement 
that after 12 years of being an ambassador for PokerStars, we had an amicable split and I will no longer be an ambassador for the company. Um, and in a lot of ways, it's somewhat freeing. And I'll tell you why. Because, you know, for years, when I make a statement about poker or anything like that, people just say, oh, you're just saying that because you're being paid to say that, which like I know is not true. I could pass a thousand lie detectors to prove that, but you know, no one's ever going to take me up on that. Um, but what's great about, you know, the situation now is I can go back to essentially making comments and statements about the poker community that I guess would have more credibility because of that. And I understand, listen, obviously if you're being paid by a company and you're discussing that company or decisions they make, people are going to look at that and go, ah, you're just being a shill. Doesn't ha- it, it, it obviously looks that way, but you'll see in the coming months how uh, inaccurate that really is because I've had the luxury over the last 20 years of being on the inside when it comes to the business side of poker, the professional side of poker, and I know what they're, I know what poker players are missing. I know what some of the people in business miss about you know what it's like to be a professional poker player. But I would say if I had to say which side is more delusional, it's the side that thinks that they have, like I saw this thing where a guy wrote a piece about how, you know, the fundamental rights of an online poker player. You don't have any. It's kind of, it's kind of cute and silly to think like you have fundamental rights when it comes to using a service. There's a misconception and a lot of it has to do with for years um, to build a base. Poker companies were, you know, doing whatever they could to attain players and they were retaining winning players who were high, high volume regs who were, you know, doing quite well and also getting, you know, high rake back and things like that. Um, but anyway, point is, uh, I'm really thankful for like the time that I had there. I have nothing but good things to say. You know, obviously there was ups and downs and there's decisions that I didn't make, you know what I'm saying? And I would have liked to see differently, but when you, you know, it's not my company, I just simply was paid to represent the brand. And now that I'm not, um, I'll still fair, fairly discuss any issues, positive and negative with them, with party poker, with WSOP. It's kind of opened me up a little bit to be able to do that without, you know, feeling as though people are wondering if I'm just shilling or saying things based off of the fact that I'm, you know, being paid. And, uh, I think you may be surprised, but, uh, I can say that I just, I've had access to a knowledge base that some of you haven't. And they're, listen, poker players, we're kind of a selfish bunch. We think about what's best for us. You know, often, you know, poker players think like, what's your goal as a poker player, you're professional to maximize your EV, right? That's, and that's totally cool. You want to sit in the best games. You want to get the best rake back. You want to pay the lowest rake. What do you think every company in the world's motto is? Same freaking thing. So as a professional poker player, you are your own company. And your job is to maximize your own profit. Every company's job is to essentially do the same thing. In fact, there are laws that you could go to jail if you don't. Like if you, for, if you run a company and you have stockholders and you, are, you, know, you, you, don't, you lack fiduciary responsibility, which means you know, you're always looking to improve and maximize and all those kind of things, um, you can be jailed for stuff like that. So um, I guess there's a huge disconnect and I hope in the next you know, year or two or whatever, I can help, I wouldn't say educate's the right word, but kind of like dispel a lot of mistruths about what people think about, first of all, what it takes to run an organization, whether it's WSOP running live events or poker stars running online or, you know, the various aspects and things that you need to think about outside of simply what is going to make our pros not complain. Well, that's pretty much nothing, right? Because we've no, we know poker players and I'm one of them. Listen, I'm guilty. You know, I go to sometimes, Hey, the food here sucks to this, that, you know, we all do for a stressful job. Playing poker for a living is not easy. So it, it's only natural, especially during the World Series after the grind, four or five weeks. I hate everybody. I come in on day one, wee, can't wait. And then, you know, week three, I'm like, ah, like this. But, um, but yeah, super excited about what will be going on in the future. The vlogs are going to roll out daily. Uh, first event is going to be for me the 10K Super Turbo. Uh, that's a two day event. And then you got the big 50 with a fifth, then a 1500 Omaha 8. And then, of course, the 50K No Limit Hold'em uh, event there. So, I'm planning this year to play more events than ever. Um, I'm going to do next tournament up. So, you know, if I'm in a 500 and then I bust and there's a 50K, I'm jumping into that. I'm just going to continue to ride with it. I'm also going to be playing the online events, which is something new for me. Um, It's going to be logistically a little bit more difficult shooting the vlogs, but you're going to get a vlog every day right around noonish and updates on the packages. The way that the packages work, if you're not understanding, so say you invest 100 bucks, right? That's your investment in the low roller, okay? And let's say we totally, we spend 100K in buy-ins and we cash for 120,000, okay? So that's an ROI of 20%. 
So if you put in a hundred bucks, multiply that by 20%, you're going to get back $120. The other thing that's important to note about the packages, and I'll close out with this, is um, we factored in, just on the, on the figure, maximum amount of re-entry, which we're obviously not going to take. And as well as in the unlimited re-entry ones, because there's some that are unlimited, we did, uh, we just made a guesstimation of re-entering three times each flight. Um, that's not going to matter all that much to you because whatever investment you put up, that's going to be, uh, you know, directly tied to the ROI of the package. So, you know, if I say we're spending 151,000 on the low roller, if I only spend 120,000, that doesn't affect your percentage, doesn't affect your share or whatever like that. All that's going to matter is what is the final ROI of each package? And hopefully we're in the plus in all three and we win player of the year. I really believe I'm going to win player of the year this year. I got Amanda on my side. She's the most supportive woman I've ever, you know, you know, been with because she really understands poker. She's been in the poker world for a long time and she wants me to win and I want to make her proud. I want to make all of you guys who invest in me proud. And with that, let's freaking go, man. Can't wait. See y'all. I want it all before I'm gone. Uh. I thought it was fine, but Bill... Yeah, buddy. <laughs> A lot of...